Bing ba, they be the king high. Now, what y'all won't do? Wanna be ballers, big shot paper callers. Who be getting- Welcome to the Paper Caller Show. My name is Adam Young, the founder of Ringba, and today we have a special guest, Chris Marrera, the founder of Teledrip. Teledrip is an SMS automation company, and I'm really excited to have him on the show today because his clients are making millions of dollars using their technology to send automated SMS messaging. So thank you for joining us today, Chris. It's a pleasure to have you. Thanks, Adam. I really appreciate you having me on. So tell us how you got started in ad tech and SMS. Yeah, so when I was uh, working for a hosted IT company, I was managing a rather large region. So what I was initially looking for was a solution that would enable me to contact my customers and prospects because managing, you know, half the country, it, there was just not enough of me to go around the state up top of mind with my customers and have them uh, accurately kind of follow up with me, set appointments and um, just maintain those touch points. So I started looking around for developers and business partners that could either build this for me, were working on a similar solution um, or something, some way to collaborate on that. So in looking for a solution for myself as a sales professional, I came across uh, the developers I work with now who are actually uh, already in the midst of building the solution and uh, Teledrip was already um, an idea in their mind. So once I saw that and saw that SMS was their core focus of contacting uh, customers and consumers, I thought that this could be an entirely uh, business within itself. Um, and then once we started to really work on that and look at the industry and look at how we can kind of bring this product to market, we saw who else was in the industry and what they were doing. And then we realized that uh, shows like LeedsCon and Affiliate Summit, and there was a whole marketplace centered around this. So really in looking for a solution for myself as a sales professional, I stumbled upon the ad tech industry and the, the developers who are building the solution. That's amazing. It's funny how that works, right? You're trying to solve a problem for yourself and it ends up being this massive problem that a ton of people are experiencing. And we see it all the time too. A lot of our clients are always asking, how that they can reach more people, generate more phone calls, and create more revenue for themselves. And so I do know that a bunch of our clients work with Teledrip, and they're extremely happy with the product and service that they've received, and have always told us that you guys go above and beyond to ensure that they're successful with their campaigns. So let's talk about that for a moment. What are some of the verticals and industries that your clients are specializing in today? And how are they utilizing SMS technology to drive inbound phone calls and contacts with their customers? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a pretty large presence in the insurance industry. So life, health, auto, things like that. Home services is rather large. Uh, finance, um, pretty much anybody that has a landing page and or are looking to follow up or contact speed to contact for consumers. So it's a very broad base of verticals. And the way we're leveraging it is we're now taking what we've done with AI and scheduling and follow up. And we're, we're using much lighter touch points on the consumer. We're finding that that's very effective. So in the past, you might have filled out a form for an auto insurance quote. Um, and then as soon as you clicked enter, you just were bombarded with calls. You know, maybe you were called five times that day, you weren't available, you were at work, whatever the case may be. With SMS, we're able to send a single SMS that's customized and personalized, and then that engages the consumer. So um, a little kind of uh, metric from Salesforce, 91% of users who opted in to receive text messages from a brand see those messages as somewhat or very useful. So you know, people enjoy receiving text messages more than a phone call, especially, you know, the, the younger generations text way more than use a phone call. So we, we use that and we engage the consumer, answer their questions, and then schedule a follow-up call. If they're available at that moment, we'll call them then as well. And we find that there's a good mix between outbound IVR calls and scheduled texts. Um, that's kind of been the most effective solution. And with calling and texting people from, you know, a long code number, they're now used to who that is. So if I texted you and said, hey, Adam, 
thanks for your interest. And now you're having a conversation with us. You're asking questions about the value prop pricing and you tell us when you want to be called. When that number does call you, you're a lot more likely to answer because you've seen uh, where it's coming from, who it is, and you've already had a bunch of questions answered. So what are some of the conversion rates that you're seeing after sending out these texts or IVR calls versus traditional lead generation contact? Yeah, so we're seeing some of the guys that are doing uh, pure IVR versus an IVR and SMS combination, uh, almost doubling their convergence. So bringing in that SMS is such a good touch point with enabling the consumer to schedule their follow-up. So when you're, when you're calling with IVR or any sort of automatic means, you're just you're reaching out and hoping that they answer or you're leaving a voicemail. When you're sending that text message, now you're putting the power in the consumer's hand to say, hey, call me at 2.30 tomorrow or, or 5 p.m. Uh, a week from now. So our system uh, and most SMS systems with good scheduling and AI can look at that and give the power to the consumer. And then when they decide when they want to be called, you have a much happier consumer who's much more likely to purchase your product. That's amazing. And I actually think I've communicated with these type of bots before and not even realized it. They're super polite. They're, they're very, uh, I wouldn't say aggressive, but they're just very fast to reply, but um, do a really great job with scheduling, changing appointments, uh, and just like you said, giving the power back to me to decide when I want to be called and then being really good about getting those phone calls connected at the actual time that the consumer wants to speak. Uh, and it was kind yeah. of mind blowing for me the first time I realized I was chatting with AI as opposed to just chatting with a human that had bi-directional SMS. It kind of was like a light bulb moment where I was like, oh my God, this is AI and it's handling everything for me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. We leverage full AI on our system. I'm sure other systems use, they may use some sort of combination of humans and AI. We do have humans that back up our AI, but we found that training those systems on a total um, kind of big swath of sentiment enables the AI to get smarter and smarter. Because if you're doing a lot of volume, um, it's essentially you're putting a feedback loop in to train the system. So. If you're sending out tens of thousands of texts a day, it doesn't take very long before the AI really understands what that consumer sentiment is. Let's talk about the other side of this equation for a moment. What are some of the challenges of working with SMS? Yeah, so there's, there's a few of them. Um, one might be your deliverability. Um, so there's some differences between long code SMS, short code SMS, and toll free SMS. So those are your three kind of options, uh, and they all have uh, pluses and minuses. So, um, for example, the short code, you're going to have to get that approved by the carrier. So it's a longer waiting period. They're more expensive to purchase. But at the same time, once your use case is approved by the carriers, you almost have uh, carte blanche in, in the sense of deliverability and the amount of text you can send over that short code. Whereas a long code SMS, you're seeing that that's very organic because consumers can call that number right back. But at the same time, those are limited in the, in the way that uh, how many texts they can send. So SMS deliverability over a long code really needs to be tended to um, and watched every day. So um, there's some challenges with that as well as with a, with a system like ours where it's uh, AI, um, it doesn't come out of the box AI, right? So ours does now, but you have to train it. And there's a lot of work that goes behind training it and bringing together sentiment. So um, there's definitely some challenges in that regard, but uh, we still find it a, a very effective solution in combination with the IVRs or standalone as well. So what you're saying then effectively is SMS messaging requires a lot of setup at the beginning, but also a lot of split testing, like A-B testing landing pages for messaging? Um, yeah, there's not too much setup at the beginning now. Um, we've kind of did that legwork over the last year of training uh, the system. But what you really need to pay attention to is, is your words and the verbiage and um, you know, these carriers upstream, they're going to look at keywords, phrases, 
DNC percentage, how many people in, in your campaign are opting out. Um, so there's little minute details. I guess the, the biggest challenge, especially for a long code SMS strategy, would be the amount of variables that are in there for deliverability. So a lot of times customers will come to us and say, um, if, can I drop this link in my long code? Well, what's that going to do to my deliverability? And, and other than maybe it'll drop it, we really don't know until we launch that campaign because that uh, link may be in combination with the keywords and phrases you're saying, uh, in combination with how many people are opting out, in combination with how quickly um, the consumer is responding. So there's just a whole lot of variables when it comes to SMS deliverability that, uh, like you said uh, to your later point, you need to. Sp there's a lot of split testing going on, and uh, you want to really try a few different strategies before you get that sweet spot on your individual campaign. Now, are you seeing different campaigns react differently to local phone numbers, toll-free number numbers, and short codes? What are what are the result differences in those choices? Yeah, so a lot of it's going to come down to the quality and freshness of the data. So. Um, the short codes, those are gonna do well with high volume uh, campaigns. So these big, big companies that are doing tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of texts a day, and it's, um, it's very transactional. They, they can drop a link or they can send a, uh, even another number in there to click to call. Whereas the long code SMS, it becomes a little bit more organic and conversational due to the nature of the way the consumer views that long code. Um, and then toll free, it's gonna, the consumer is going to look at that and know right away, hey, this is an 800 number. This is a company marketing to me. Um, and again, it comes down to the, how targeted that data is, how fresh it is, and then when the consumer is expecting. Um, if you filled out an auto insurance quote uh, two weeks ago and you've just gone about your day and now you're getting a text, you may need a little bit of a refresher. You may have some more questions. So uh, you may react differently to a long code than a short code and a toll free. So a lot of that plays into um, consumer psychology and how people are viewing the different mechanisms. Now, do you see most of your customers integrating with you and sending over lead data in real time? Absolutely. So um, the, the real time data is probably the best use case. Um, one, uh, and that would be for calls as well, right? So the, the more mm -hmm. fresh the data, the higher the conversion rates. Um, it, it definitely has the highest uh, close rates for our customers. Uh, the age data still works well, and um, in general, what we kind of use as uh, benchmarks is the, the more fresh the data, the more aggressive you can be on the campaign, and the older the data, obviously, you want to space that out, give the consumer time to, to kind of wake up and understand who you are, remember um, that they filled out this form, and then answer their questions. So... Um, both strategies work, but we've seen very high successful rates with the very fresh off the landing page data. That makes complete sense. So let's head back to that age data you were just talking about. I think that's a great segue into my next question. What are some of the regulatory challenges with SMS and what are some of the things that people sending SMS really need to watch out for? Well, so the first part, if you're ever leveraging a fully automated system, um, you, the TCPA is the big glaring neon light. Um, so if you're leveraging a system where it's fully automated, there's full AI, you need to have that express consent from the consumer to contact them in the first place. So they really lump uh, AI texting as the same thing as automated calls and dialing. So it's a fully automated system. So right off the bat, hey, do you have that express consent? Um, then the other part, which we feel like we've done a good job uh, measuring is you, you look at a lot of companies that are using different types of AI or they're leveraging an avatar system. Um, and a lot of times you're seeing that consumers need to be removed from the campaign are not interested, but they're not necessarily saying um, stop, remove, take mm -hmm. me off your list. So it's really important that um, 
customers work with a system that AI out of the box can recognize sentiment. So that sentiment will be able to tell whether or not the consumer is frustrated, if they're being passive aggressive. Um, I see a lot, of, a lot of people might get into trouble if they're leveraging a system that's only looking at keywords because if somebody is clearly wanting you to remove them, but they're not giving you those key words and you keep contacting them, now you're gonna deal with a very frustrated, angry consumer. Whereas really, really people should look for systems that are measuring the sentiment of uh, the consumer and able to remove people easily and uh, get them off that list and, and scrub them out quickly. That seems like a major, major benefit to Teledrip that we probably should just spend a moment highlighting. I mean, I don't send any SMS, we make technology too, but it seems to me like if someone were using an automated SMS system, that list hygiene and deliverability, uh, as you said, is, is gonna be at the top of their list of concerns. And most SMS systems will only remove you if you message them the specific word stop. Um, and I've seen a lot of best practice guides with SMS and it always shows that one removal word of stop. And so. Uh, I can see that as a massive improvement to this sort of archaic system where you guys are automatically looking for that sentiment, automatically trying to find uh, people who are unhappy, screamers, as we used to call them back in the email days, uh, yeah. and then getting them off their list because they're never going to buy, they're never going to call, uh, and they're just a pain in the butt for everyone. So I think that's an amazing portion of your system. and. Uh, it should be highlighted here that if anyone's going to do SMS automation, that can save you a ton of time and potentially a ton of exposure to TCPA lawsuits. And those lawsuits come with very large penalties up to, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong here, Chris, it's $1,500 per contact. So if you send someone 10 SMSs, that's an exposure of $15,000 uh, if they don't want to be on that list and then they they complain to the FTC or something like that. So I think that's an amazing thing that you guys have built. Yeah, absolutely. And SMS is another easy way for uh, consumers to remove themselves from those campaigns. So in the traditional IVR calling, you have the different options, press one to transfer, two to schedule in our case, uh, nine to DNC. A lot of times these consumers, they, don't, they won't even listen to that last part they won't get to that nine to DNC. So when you're texting, it's very easy for them to just uh, opt themselves out through, through their sentiment. So tell me this, how are some of your best clients, without giving too much away, of course, generating their real-time data? Um, what can some of the affiliates that are watching right now do to generate their own data to start to drive inbound phone calls through SMS automation? Yeah, so from our side, we, we really kind of stay away from the data in the sense that we're a fully automated system. So we're not providing any data to our customers, but we do work closely with them in the sense that we're very tied into their whole stream, their path, uh, and then that landing page where that data ends up uh, coming into Teledrip. So um, really the more targeted you could be with your data, the better. Um, obviously you have some sometimes some cross promotional offers that really work well together um, but the more targeted you can be the better and then with the SMS campaign the messaging allows you to be very specific and very targeted as well so I think when you're leveraging SMS keep in mind of that whole customer journey or consumer journey and think about what do they click through um, what are they looking at? And then continue that same messaging and flow through your text messaging campaign so that it's very organic all the way through. And so do you, what do you see as the future of SMS? Where is the industry heading? Yeah, so I, I think SMS is absolutely exploding. As I mentioned, um, younger people, uh, over 83% of millennial consumers said they text more than they talk on their smartphones. Um, and then 70% of marketers agree that focusing on customer journey has led to an increase in revenue growth. So as I just mentioned with the text messaging, that is becoming an integral part of the customer journey. And we all have our smartphones on us. We all, we all text every day. 
Uh, I can't imagine that there's anybody watching this video that didn't send at least one text message today. Um, so I definitely see it exploding in growth from a user perspective. There's definitely a lot that remains to be seen from a compliance aspect, as well as with the AI portion. I mean, we're looking at laws from the 90s that text message wasn't even a thing back then, as well as artificial intelligence. So I think there'll be an interesting look at how the regulators look at text messaging, but I think leveraging systems that are smartly and intelligently applying it to the consumer, we're gonna see that explode and open up as the, as the preferred mechanism of contact. I think we would all prefer to send a text or two um, rather than be on the phone. Uh, a typical use case that, that I'm envisioning is something like, um, you know, I called the DMV uh, last week. And when I called, I waited on hold for a really long time. <laughs> and then, they, then by the time I waited on hold, they said, hey, we'll give you a call back in 45 minutes. So then I had to wait 45 minutes, I get a call back, they connect me with a, a, a worker there at the DMV and he had no idea about most of the things I was asking, had to look everything up. Imagine if you could just text a business like that or an organization or a government entity your question, you verify your identification and now with, with artificial intelligence, and big data, they're able to look at all of the information in the system about you, give you those answers quickly and efficiently without you spending very much time. So I think text messaging in general is just in its infancy from a consumer to business uh, relationship. And I also see that maybe bleeding over into different applications like uh, WhatsApp and uh, different mechanisms of messaging in general, uh, I think will be much more pervasive in the next few years. Sounds like a very bright future for SMS. So if any of our clients are crazy enough to not be doing automated SMS right now, or any of our viewers watching want to work with you guys to set up automated SMS campaigns, how do they get in contact with you and how do they get in contact with Teledrift? Yeah, so you can go to our website and uh, fill out a form for a demo request. We also have uh, a bot on there that can connect you with a sales rep in your area, whether it's east or west coast. So uh, just visit teledrip.com and uh, we'll take care of you. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much for sponsoring our party at Affiliate Summit, the Paper Callers Party. We really appreciate it. And thank you so much for the value that you delivered to our viewers today on the, the show. Thanks, Adam. I really appreciate it. It was a fun. Thanks for watching the Paper Caller Show. Let us know what you think by joining the conversation and commenting below. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. And if you're on mobile, tap the bell. Whether you're new to Paper Call or an industry veteran, we invite you to join the free community at papercallers.com. This episode of Paper Callers is brought to you by Ringba Call Tracking and Analytics. See how Ringba is inventing the future of calls at ringba.com. See you next week.